We just commit this service into the Lord's hand. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time, Father God. We thank you that you're mindful of us, Father God, Jesus. Lord, we pray and we commit this service into your hands, Father God. And we pray that, Father God, you'll touch each and every heart present here in this hall. Everyone that is watching us online, Father God, Jesus. I pray and commit their lives into your hands, Father God. Father God, no one will live empty today, Father God, Jesus. I pray that you'll talk to their hearts and minds, Father God, whatever they have in their minds today, Lord Jesus. You know it, Father God. And we leave it into your hands, Father God, knowing that you are in control, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. Let's join our choir. And uh, we praise and we serve a living God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're together again. Come on, everyone, let's sing. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. In one accord. Together again, just praising the Lord. We're together again in one. 
Christ is still King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords, the bright morning star. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's our responsibility. We have to tell others who Jesus is and what he can do in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll sing this hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me. A sinner condemned and clean. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that God, when we, while we were yet sinners, He demonstrated His love. He did not just say, I love you, but He demonstrated it by sending Jesus to die on the cross. That's how much He loves us. And we wonder why. Why? David, uh, he said, you know, creator of heaven and earth, who am I? Who is man? Who? Why would you love us? Why are you mindful of us? That was David's wonder. And this song talks about that. Lord, why would you love a person like me? But it is, what it is, it is this great, amazing love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. For his love, unconditional love.
is unconditional and amazing love that saved a wretch like me. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Greater love has no man. And we thank you, Lord, that you chose to love us. We glorify Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are awesome, Jesus. There's no one like you. Be glorified.
Father in heaven, we come before your presence once again, O oh God. Thank you for this beautiful moment that we can come into worship and be part of this service, O oh Lord. Father, as we'll be going into our service in proper, Lord, we pray, God, that the word that will be shared today, it will uh, shape us to be a good followers of you, Lord. Help us to become a good disciple of yours, O oh God. And Father, grant us with your wisdom, understanding, and your knowledge, O oh Lord, that each and every breath that we take, it glorifies and magnifies your name, O oh Lord. We pray for all the listeners that are present here in your house today, Lord. We pray, God, that you'll bless them all, O oh God. And we pray for those who are listening online, O oh Lord. Let your word be touching them. And during your due time, O oh Lord, that seed will be planted, O oh Lord. And once again, we commit our life into hands now. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and ask. Everybody said, Amen, 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 Amen. Why don't we all sit down today? And once again, we welcome you in the house of the Lord. And today we are very delighted to have uh, uh, Auntie Tala with us. So she will be coming up and sharing the message today. Why don't we all uh, receive her with a clap of applause? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I thank God that you're able to make it to the house of God this morning. And it is my prayer that whatever we share today will be very meaningful in your Christian walk and your walk with the Lord. And I must thank the leaders for giving me the privilege to stand here on their pulpit to come and share with you what God has laid in my heart. Amen. So today we are going to, for the last month we have been um, talking about Pentecostal and saving soul. Save soul, make disciples. That has been our theme for the last month. And I can see that it has continued this month. And you know, God does not do things by coincidence. He knows too well that people have to be saved. And I believe he is coming soon. That is why he is desperate and he's going to be aggressive. And he wants all of us to partake of this mission to save soul. Amen? So, like I said... God does not do things by coincidence. So I hope and I pray that whatever we share will be very meaningful to all of us here today. So I will take our scripture reading from Nehemiah before we pray. Nehemiah chapter 1. I will just read from verses 1 to 4. I think it's up there. We are just going to learn from this man. You know, God could have written a lot of characters in the Bible, but he only... uh, chose a few, and he wrote them down in the book. And he said it was for their example that we learn. Amen? So Nehemiah chapter 1, we will read it from the uh, board, and it says, The word of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah and asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, you know, the survivors who are left from captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burnt. Uh, Verse four. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Let's bow down in prayer. Dear God, we are here before you in your holy presence. 
Thank you for your written word that we're able to read, that we're able to understand. But Lord, we come to you for clarity. Today, as we read the book of Nehemiah, we are trusting that we want to learn something from him. Help each and everyone who is sitting here today, every heart, every mind, to focus on you and you alone. I'm just your servant who is here to impart something you have laid in my heart. So thank you, Lord. We uplift this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, like I said, our theme for the month, and again, this month, as I see, is save soul and make disciples. And like I said, we try and learn something from Nehemiah this morning. Amen. So to save someone or to save a soul is to rescue or to deliver that soul from any danger or harm. Amen. So when you save someone, you're trying to rescue that person or you're trying to deliver that person who may be in danger, who may be in distress, or to preserve or to guard it from injury or from destruction. Amen? So example, if someone is drowning, you can't just say, hey, 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 move this way, move this way. You'll, you'll have to do something to save that person, would you? You might have to jump in the river and save that person. You will do something. Amen? So that is saving. You've got to engage yourself into saving something. Hallelujah. And making disciples, it is a command from Jesus Christ. It is a commandment that he, he commanded us to do, to help people, to help souls, to trust and to follow him, to follow Jesus. So it is a command from Jesus to help people, to help souls, to help them to trust Jesus Christ. It is a process. Eh? So making disciples is a process of helping people from conversion, getting to know Christ, so you're converting them, and then process of getting them to maturity, and then getting them to multiply. Amen? So that is making disciples. And saving souls, like I say, you have to help salvage that person from danger. So when you save that soul or someone, you help. Amen? Like I said, you do something to help. It requires action. It requires something that you should do to avoid the harm or to escape from the dangerous and that unpleasant situation. Amen? So you're getting me. So today we will try and learn from this man, Nehemiah, from the script that we have read. Remember, Nehemiah was a cup bearer to the Persian king. So he must be in the palace. His position was of great trust because he was dealing directly with the king. He was also an advisor to the king. And he was keeping the king safe from being poisoned because he was a cup bearer. Okay? So he no doubt was enjoying the luxury of the, the palace. He must be very comfortable because he was with all this royalty. But the Bible says that despite him being in the palace, he said his heart, his heart what with, was with his people in Jerusalem. Amen? He was comfortable. Are we comfortable? And where's your heart? I hope it's not comfortable too. Amen. His heart was with his people in Jerusalem. So he is one person that championed helping. So as we have read verses 1 and 2 in chapter 1, that Hanani, one of his brethren came from Jerusalem, and he came and told him, because of his concern, see he was concerned about his people, he was concerned about Jerusalem, and now his brother is telling him, they said to me, you know the survivors there, those that are left there, they are in great distress and reproach. 
That's what the Bible says. They're in distress and reproach. One um, interpretation says they are in trouble and they're in disgrace. Trouble and disgrace. You know disgrace when you, 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 you lose your reputation, you lose uh, the respect that you deserve as a result of some, uh, some dishonorable acts. So you know the Israelites, they were God's chosen people. But now when Hanani was right, uh, uh, Nehemiah was writing, they were in captives. They were being like prisoners in another country. So the, the people that were left there now, that's why they were distressed. Amen? So, like I said, they were in distress. Their wall, there was no wall. Their wall was broken down. Their gates were burnt. So there was no security there for them as well. Because the only thing that secured them from their enemies were the, the walls that they had and the gates that were there at the wall. So, it was not secured, open for attack from the enemy. So you can imagine, they really did have a very miserable life. Amen? So, Nehemiah saw that. He saw because of his concern, he knew that they needed help. Amen? His family needed help. His people needed help. Amen. His friends needed help. They were vulnerable. They were vulnerable out there in Jerusalem. So that was the situation that Nehemiah had. So he said, man, I've got to do something. I've got to act. Amen. So this is not something that is strange for us sitting here today. Or maybe if you're listening in this morning. It's not strange. If you look around, man, the society is miserable. Our families, they are in distress. The situation is, uh, is, is not strange today. They, they are troubled. And the biggest trouble and the biggest problem is they are troubled with sin. We are all troubled with sin. We are lost. We may be sitting here today. A lot are still there. They are troubled with sin. They are lost. They do not know Jesus Christ. That is the biggest problem. That is the biggest distress. That is the biggest distress, disgrace. disgrace. Amen. They are vulnerable to the work of this dark world that is driving them to destruction. They are heading towards eternal death and destruction. We are enjoying the goodness of God, are we? Because we know that there is a hope after this. They don't. Are we concerned? They have been held hostage by Satan. Don't you know that? The question is, how can I help? How can you help? Can you help? Can you really do something to save them? I don't know. But you know what? Yes, you can. Yes, we can. Amen? Right. We can. We can do something. But we've got to act. We cannot just sit down. We cannot just come sit, go back, oh, sir, they're in distress. Oh, sir, they've been doing this. Are you doing something about it? You can do something about it. And you know what? The only way that can save, the only way that we can help, and the only thing that we can do is to introduce Jesus Christ to them. Amen? Yes, we can. You can introduce Jesus Christ to them. You can introduce Jesus Christ to your neighbor. You can introduce Jesus Christ to your family. Those that are still vulnerable, they still do not know Jesus Christ. You can tell them the work that Jesus has done 
for all of us. Because he is the only way. He is the only truth. And he is the only life, source of life to all of us. Amen? And we are enjoying it. We are blessed because we know it. We have known this truth and we have known this Jesus Christ. They are there. They still do not know. They are still vulnerable. And they are heading to hell. You've got to do something. There are a few ways and a few manner, manner and ways and method that we can help save others. They can be redeemed. They can be delivered. And we can bail them out or rescue them. Just to name a few. That is something that we can do. And you know what? Jesus has done all of this. He has done all. He has done all of those. He has redeemed us. He has rescued us. He has delivered us. He has paid our debt. He has bailed us. Yes, he has done it. That's why we are free. And we are free indeed. Amen? They don't know the truth. They are still in the dark. But you have been delivered. You know that. Amen. You have been redeemed. Amen. You have been set free. Amen. They haven't. What are you doing? Are you doing something about it? Amen. Redeeming is releasing a person from bondage or penalty. Bondage is a state of being a slave. That's a bondage. So when you redeem something, you are releasing that person from that state of being a slave and giving what is demanded. Amen? Look, that's what Jesus did. He redeemed us. Amen? He released us from our bondage. Amen? So redeem is paying the price in order to secure the release of something or someone. And Jesus has done that. Yes? And you know it. Amen? Right. And Paul provides a full explanation in the New Testament. This is what he said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. In him, in Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood. I wish we can write right there. Can we all read that? One, two, three. In him, we have redemption through his blood. Amen. The forgiveness of Amen. According to the riches of his grace. And you know his grace is immeasurable. It has no measure. Too much. I always tell my granddaughter, I, said, I love you too much. Can't count. And he knows it. As soon as I ask her, decide. Decide, how much do I love you? I know now, too much. Can't count. So it's just something that we exchange and she knows it. And imagine Jesus Christ, I'm just a human being. His grace and his love for you is immeasurable. Amen? And he has already redeemed us through his blood and his blood alone. Amen? The forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Amen. So redeeming, we can help. In the redemption part, we can tell them, hey, Jesus has done this for you. You know, those that are still there. You are there. You are in bondage of this. You are in bondage of that. But someone has already set you free. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's the thing that we can do. Jesus has delivered us. Amen? He has already delivered us. Delivering is this. is releasing the person from confinement. Confinement is a state where you are forced to stay in a certain boundary. That is confinement. So, delivering is releasing a person from confinement. Releasing a person from suffering. Releasing a person from slavery or temptation. So, when you are in that, imagine, from, like I said... Delivering you from slavery. And we all know that we are all slaves to sin. Yes? We are all slaves to sin. Because we are sin. Nobody is perfect. 
Hallelujah, but Jesus has already delivered us at the finished work at Calvary. He can deliver you from, from addictions. If you think you are addicted and you can't get over it, I cannot get over this. I cannot get over the drinking habit I have. I cannot get over the adultery relationship that I'm having because I can't get away from her or him. God can deliver you. Jesus has already done that for you. You just have to stand by faith and receive it by faith that you've been delivered. The power of Jesus Christ has delivered you already. Amen? So deliverance, therefore, is being rescued from danger of this confinement, of these addictions, of this, of this slavery, of the temptations that you're having. Amen? And God alone gives deliverance. Nobody else, there is no power that can deliver you from the things that you are going through, from the suffering, from the addictions, from the temptation. You think you're always tempted to something. You can't get over the temptation of whatever you're going through. You can. You can get away from that temptation. You can get away from that bad habit. Jesus has done it. And God gives deliverance. And often he does it through human agents. Like today, we are trying to learn from Nehemiah. He was God's agent to go and deliver, to go and uh, rescue the people from Jerusalem. Moses was used by God to deliver the Israelites from the Egyptians. Joshua, just to name a few. But God uses human agents as well. He can use you. He can use you, go help that person who is suffering from some sort of addiction, sit with him, sit with her, share the good news, tell him about Jesus, tell him that, hey, Jesus has done this for you and me. You can believe, you can get over it. Come, come with me to church. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Amen? Psalms 34, 17, it says that the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, hears them. He delivers them. I hope it's there, everybody. Psalms 34, 17? All right. Okay, we'll read that. Two, three. The righteous cry out, and the Lord, and delivers them out of? Out of, can I hear it again? Out of? All their troubles, not only some. Not only few. Amen? Amen? Said God will deliver them out of all your troubles. He'll deliver you. That's a simple message that you can share to them. That's your act of compassion for them to know that Jesus Christ has done it. Amen? So Jesus has delivered us from fear. If you're told to come here and share something, hey, just go and testify. Hurry, I'm scared, I'm frightened. Get that fear out. You've been delivered in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen? Yes, he has delivered us from fear, from death, from the attack, from the people, from persecution. He has done it all. Amen? And God uses, like I said, human agents to help save. Man, so can God can use you to do something. God used Nehemiah for his people. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah in our reading was an agent to deliver his people from their confinement of suffering and distress and trouble. Amen. And rescuing. Rescuing. God, Jesus has rescued us. He has rescued us from the dangers that we were at, from the danger zone that we were living. Jesus has already bailed us and rescued us. So saving a person, rescuing is saving a person from danger or harmful and unpleasant situation. So when you are rescuing something, you are saving that person from the danger he is or she is at or an unpleasant situation that he or she is at. 
It can also mean to redeem or to ransom oneself. Amen? Like I said in the example before, you can rescue someone from drowning. You can rescue someone from getting burned in the fire. Someone is in the house. The house is uh, burned. You can't just fold your hand and, and stand there. Maybe if it's too generous, then yes. But if in the, your capacity to jump in and pull that person out, I know you can do that. So you're saving somebody's uh, life. Second Timothy verse, chapter 4, verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely in his heavenly kingdom. 418, yeah. And the Lord will deliver me. There's some um, interpretation says, my interpretation says uh, rescue, deliver. It means the same. From every evil work. And what? He'll preserve you. He'll keep you for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever. Amen? So see, listen, all the examples that I have uh, mentioned above. Yeah, you're being, Jesus being our rescuer. Jesus being our deliverer, redeemer. Yeah? To name a few. These are some of the ways in which Jesus has done. A way that we can save someone. And we can identify the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the very reason why he came down to earth. He could have been just there in heaven. But you know, he chose to come down to earth to do the will of his father. And that is he came and he gave his life for you and me to receive all that we have mentioned so that you can be redeemed so you can be rescued, so you can be saved. That's why he came. Not to do his will, but to do the will of his father. And he came. So he came to save the lost. That is in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. So God's act of rescue, of redeeming, of saving... It is an example of how compassionate he is, how much he loves us. I like the way Talatala said it, you know, that we were still there, while we were still sinners. God decided to give his life. He decided to die on the cross for you and me. And we, as the disciple of Jesus Christ, remember we are all sitting here, you are came here this morning because you have believed in Jesus Christ. And maybe some, I don't know whether we're on live or maybe listening to this later. But Jesus Christ has done all this for you as well. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. And we, as the disciples who have given and have known Jesus Christ, as his disciple, his followers, we can do and follow what Jesus has done. We can go and act out our compassion, our love for those that are still lost. Amen? Introduce Jesus. Introduce Jesus. Introduce Jesus to them. Tell them of the finished work at Calvary. That's your act of helping. That's your act of compassion. That's your act to tell him how much you love him. And how much you love them. For them to know what you know. So that they can also enjoy what you are enjoying right now. I always say often, don't be a selfish Christian. That we just come and know and enjoy and receive the blessings from him and sit comfortably. Go there. Tell the ones that have not known. Let them know it as well. Amen? Amen? So our concern here is the vulnerability of our people. They are lost. They are without Jesus Christ. They need to be rescued. They need to be saved to come to know Jesus. They need it. And time is very short. 
ticking. He is coming soon. We've got to do something. Romans 3.23 says, For we all have sinned, and we fall short of the glory of God. Everyone. But hallelujah. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of that sin, because everybody sin, I think everybody knows that, common knowledge, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not anything else, not anybody else, but in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is a free gift that God is giving us, the gift of salvation, Jesus Christ. And that is the thing that I'm trying to encourage us today. Go, tell the good news. That is the good news, the gospel. That is the thing we know. The very reason we are here, or maybe listening. We have our hope in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Jesus Christ, our Deliverer. Jesus Christ, whom have rescued us from eternal death to life eternal. Amen? So our challenge this morning, this is our challenge. It is right there before us. Right before us every day. To help save a soul. Strength save a soul. Save someone from that penalty that we have just spoken of. Save someone from the penalty of sin, which is death. To come and receive the free gift through Jesus Christ. That is our challenge. Amen? We will try to see, let's just try and see and learn something from Nehemiah therefore this morning. How he helped those that were in distress. So number one, Nehemiah identified the need and responded. Amen? So chapter one, verses two and three, like I've already mentioned, he heard from his brethren because of his Concern. The Bible says he was concerned. Right. The men of Judah and asked them, concerning. See, I can see this concerning bit there twice in one verse. And I asked them, concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. He was concerned. He was concerned. He was concerned about his people. He was concerned about Jerusalem. Concern. Okay? If we are concerned in the first place, then we will be moved to do something. If there's no concern? Oh, it's okay. Never mind. Let it be. Never mind. Let them just do whatever they want. But if you have that concern in the soul of a person, you are prompted to do something. Are you concerned about your family who is still lost? Who still do not know Christ? Are you concerned about your best friend who has not received Jesus Christ? What did Nehemiah do with his concern? Because he was concerned, what did he do? We'll go to verse 4. What does verse 4 say? Let's see what verse 4 says. So it was when I heard these words, when I heard what I heard, Nehemiah, what did I do? I sat down and wept and moaned, mourned, and for many days. And the Bible says, I was fasting and I was praying before God of heaven. If you are concerned, if you are concerned, your concern has to be there. You have to be concerned. Like I said, if you're not concerned, all this will not matter to you. He was concerned about his people. And that is what he did. He sat. He wept. It just happened. And he mourned for days. And he was fasting and he was praying. If you go a little further in chapter 2, verse 2. Because the king asked him, because he was looking very sad. You know, he is, is not normally what Nehemiah does. He doesn't always look sad, you know. For his work, he shouldn't look sad anyway. But that day, after all this thing of weeping and mourning and 
fasting and praying, he must have went that day and he was looking a bit sad. And in chapter 2, verse 2, he said, the king asked him, why is your face sad, Nehemiah, since you are not sick? And he said, since you are not sick, and the Bible said, this is nothing but sorrow of the Sorrow of the? Sorrow of the heart. It was a heart issue. Amen? The concern that Nehemiah had did not only affect his mind. It affected his heart. You know, when something affects your heart and touches your heart, and you express yourself from the heart, anything can move. You will touch somebody else's heart. You will touch God's heart. So Nehemiah must have been weeping and mourning and praying and fasting from the depth of his heart. Amen? So when something moves your heart, it comes from within your being. No wonder he sat and he wept. And he mourned and fasted and he was able to fast. Maybe that's why we cannot fast on Tuesdays and we cannot come here to pray on Tuesdays because nothing is touching our heart. Not here, not in Kinoya, maybe some other churches. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the prayer and the fasting that you're committed to on Tuesdays. God bless you. But Nehemiah's heart was touched. You've got to touch God's heart. And anything, any issue that is prompted from the heart, from the inmost being, everything is possible. So when he prayed, and they said that he prayed, when he prayed, he not only prayed for himself, but he stood before God and interceded for his people. Amen? He did not only pray for himself, he prayed for his people. He confessed their sins and he asked God for forgiveness. Amen? So you've got to try when you are concerned about your family, you're concerned about the lost, you, are, you want them to be saved, you've got to pray and stand in the gap for them. Confess their sin. Talk to God on their behalf. Lord, I'm praying for my brother. I'm praying for my child. I'm praying for my auntie who is not saved. Please forgive our sins. Forgive my people. He prayed for his people. He confessed on their behalf. We need to intercede for our people. Those that are dear to us, to our hearts, for those that are lost. Amen? Prayer is powerful. Fasting is effective. And that's exactly what Jesus does. Before he started his ministry, that's Jesus himself, the son of God, God himself. Before he actually started his ministry, after his baptism, that's the first place he went. He fasted for 40 days. How much more for us who needs that power, who are limited in all things? We need to pray. We need to fast for those that are lost. Amen? Amen? And you know what happened? Then Nehemiah went and after the king has asked him, why are you sad? What is happening? And Nehemiah told him everything. Oh, king, why shouldn't I be sad? You know, the people are suffering. The people are in distress. Jerusalem's wall is broken down. The gates are burnt. And then then he told the king what he needed, what he is. He wants to do to help his people. And then you know what happened? The king granted all that Nehemiah has told him. I wanted timber, I wanted this, I wanted um, whatever he required to repair the wall. The king granted all to Nehemiah. And he facilitated all that he required. Plus, some extra things that the king did to Nehemiah. He even sent a captain with him, with some horse, horsemen. 
to go with Nehemiah. See what God can do, what God can do when you have that concern and that passion to go and to share the gospel and to spread the good news. Good news. God will be there with you. He can add and multiply things for you to help you do that. Chapter 2 verse 8 said, And the king granted them to me. Okay, granted what he requested. And the king granted them to me. Chapter 2 verse 8. And the Bible said, According to the good hand of my God upon me. So everything that was granted to Nehemiah was according to the good hand of his God, our God. Amen? Amen. So you can do it. We can do it together. We can go out there. Don't be discouraged. God's good hand will be upon us. We take the first step of concern, concern for their soul, concern for their life. Then ask God, God, this is what I'm intending to do. Tell him what you intend to do, what you need for the mission. God will grant to you according to the hand of God. Amen? So yes, we can do it. So God's hand will be upon us as we go out there to help, to help save a soul. God's hand will be there. When you pray, when you fast, and you ask God, God will answer and grant your prayer of faith. Amen? And the last thing, remember, when Nehemiah was doing this, do expect evil alliances. Remember, you are never alone. Your mission to help save a soul will never go unchallenged. Yes, never go unchallenged. Chapter 4, if you go right to chapter 4, I'll just go to chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1, but so it happened when Sanballat, Sanballat, yeah, and so it happened when San, Sanballat is a, he is a, he's a Samaritan leader. Man, he's a Samaritan leader, and you know Samaritans, they're enemies to the Jews. They don't agree with what the Jews does. So, when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall that he was furious and very indignant and he mocked the Jews. Man, he mocked. So, it's not easy. You're not going to be alone. The other party too will be there trying to stop you from doing what you are intending to do. And verse 2, it says, if you go on to verse 2, he said, this guy said, what are these fees, feeble Jews doing? What are they doing? Will they fortify the city? See? Will they fortify the city? Will they offer sacrifice? Will they, will they? What is this guy doing coming here to save soul, coming here to, to talk about Jesus? What is this? Lady doing, come here to introduce Jesus to us. Will she, will he? See, it will come. It will try to discourage you from doing what you are going to do. Amen? The devil will instill doubt. Will you? Will you? No, you can. Said, I will in Jesus' name. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes? So don't allow the devil to put will you, will you, will you on your head. Because he has already been defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We can do it. The devil will instill doubt. He will instill fear. He will instill in negativity into your mind. But shame the devil. Tell him, no, you're under my feet. I'm going in victory and I'm going to save a soul. I'm going to make disciples. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse, even verse 3, if you go to verse 3, same chapter, chapter 4, Tobiah, Tobiah is an Ammonite official as well. Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him. And he said, whatever they build, 
If even a fox goes up to it, he will break down the stone wall. See, you'll be mocked. You'll be persecuted. But hey, we just heard God will be with you. Amen? And see what, how Nehemiah, Nehemiah responded. Verse 4. See what he did in verse 4. Can we go to verse 4? He prayed. He turned to God and he said, Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn your reproach to their own heads. All I'm saying is this. When you face persecution, when you face mockery, when you teased and when you are belittled, turn to God. Pray. Ask God to give you the strength, to give you the boldness to help you. Amen? So despite ridicule, despite mockery, the work did not. Did they stop building the wall? No, they kept building. They did not stop. With all the mockery that they were receiving, they did not stop. The work did not stop. Nehemiah and his group persevered and put his faith and his trust in God. Amen? Let's just continue to put our trust in God. And in verse 6, let's go to verse 6. Verse 6, the Bible says, So we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together, up to half. That means the work continued. Despite the opposition, the work continued. And they joined together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. So like I said before, making disciples is a process. Man, it's a process from converting, maturity, and then multiplication. So making disciples is a process. And uh, remember these people that we're talking about here, the people who had the mind to work, they were the distressed people originally. You know, they were already um, distressed. They were troubled. But now, because Nehemiah has helped them, now they were already encouraged. Their mind now were all put to work. They, were, they had lost all hope of being who they were before. God's chosen people, they were the remaining ones. You know, remember the, the Israelites were already captives to other countries, and these were the remaining ones. Eh? So, Nehemiah's committed faith and trust in God, his prayer, not only silenced or shut down the enemy, not only was that happened, but his contribution, his help, touched the mind of those that were in distress. They were not distressed now anymore. They were not troubled now anymore. They were now working together. They were now getting positive. Their mind now was getting in a positive mode. And they were building, and they were building, and they were building their life. They were now securing their life. God renewed their mind from a defeated, disgraced mindset to now a positive mindset that they can build their life. You can do that to those that are out there, distress, lost. You can be an agent for them and bring them from the mindset that they have of being a loser, from being defeated, to someone who can do something for himself through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So when you put your trust in God and pray and fast like Nehemiah, God will help you shine his light into the minds of those that you are helping. Amen? So don't worry. If you know you, you, you are going with already a defeated mind yourself, saying that I won't be able to get through to this guy because this guy is a, is a tough guy. You know, he's, he's, he can't get through Jesus Christ into his life. No, don't. Amen? God is the renewer of minds. Amen? God can use you as an agent and God will shine his light into the minds 
of those that you are trying to reach and help. God will help you to the task you are commanded to do. Amen? Amen? Right, hallelujah. So we, will, we can do this together. So last, lastly, I think I'm taking too long. Lastly, we'll go to chapter 4, verse 17. The Bible also says, while they were loading themselves, okay, those who were building, those who build on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon. Like I said, we have to expect a text. We expect the other party to be against what you're doing. And every one of the builder, verse 18 says, every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built. Amen? Nehemiah wants to remind us, this is what he wants to remind us, that there is spiritual battle out there that will challenge our mission to help save a soul, to help repair the life of someone to help rebuild the life that is broken, to help secure the life that is vulnerable to this world, that is infested with demonic attacks and so on. Amen? So Nehemiah wants to remind us there is always spiritual battle. But hallelujah, he told us what they did. They held their weapon while they worked. So while you're working, while you're out there, while you're doing the work of the Lord, while you're at home, while you're doing missionary work, mission work, they had their weapon. They had their armor on. And what they did, they said, they girded their sword on their side every day and every time. This is our sword, the word of God. You cannot go without the word of God. Amen? This is our weapon. This is something that will keep us strong, and uh, hallelujah this is I don't know I don't know what to say but we just cannot go without this if you're not used to reading the Bible I'm encouraging you through Nehemiah's technique of securing themselves from the enemy they had the sword on their side every day. You need to have this every day. If you are not into reading the Bible, I'm encouraging you today that the word is our weapon. It has to be at our side all the time. Even Jesus used this on the mount when he was fasting for those 40 days. He was tempted by Satan. And this was his defensive weapon, the scripture, the word of God. How much more us, like I said, we are limited in all ways. Jesus Christ, who is in his fullness, he still quoted the scripture to defend him from temptation from the devil. We need to safeguard ourselves and use the word of God. God has called and commanded all of us to be his disciples. He told us, go ye therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Our concern is for the lost, for the dying, for those that are in distress. Our concern should be from the heart. Introduce Jesus Christ to them. For he has done everything for us. He has done everything for you and me. It's a finished work at Calvary. He has redeemed us. He has delivered us. He has rescued us. He has paid the debt that we could not pay. We must pray and fast and put our faith to God for the mission to save those that are lost and make disciples. 
intercede on their behalf. Don't forget, put on your armor. Gird your sword at your side. Work with one hand, your weapon on the other. There is a spiritual battle ahead, but praise God, he has already won the battle on our behalf. Save a soul, make disciples. Amen. Let's bow down in prayer. Hallelujah. Dear God, we are challenged by Nehemiah this morning. Help us to be like him. Help us to be courageous. Help us to stand up. Hear the call of help and distress. Equip us, O oh God, with your word. Thank you that today you have challenged us to, to, to go out there and save someone who is still lost. Our concerns are with our family, with our friends, and with the community out there. So, Father, thank you for this word of encouragement. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Auntie. Praise the Lord. Very simply and wonderfully explained to us, illustrated to us, our, our main objective, which is to make disciples, to reach those who are lost. And uh, thank you, Auntie. And uh, um, let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's make a commitment uh, before we close off today. Uh, we have close uh, family, relatives, friends who do not know Christ. They, the only Christ they see is through us. And uh, as Nehemiah was concerned about his people, as Antitala has expressed, explained, just like Jesus, when he saw the multitude, the Bible says he had compassion on them. I think this day and age, we have reached a time where we have to keep, uh, take uh, our eyes off ourselves to others who are suffering, who are sick. They have no answer, but we have the answer, which is, who is Jesus. And so our prayer, let's target one person in our, in our minds, in our hearts. Someone close to you, someone you know maybe, or you want to um, share the gospel to them. Just an intercede for that person. Just like Nehemiah interceded for his people. Let's just, just take a few minutes, maybe someone in your mind, in your heart, and uh, could be anyone. Just uh, intercede for that person. Yeah. Help us, Lord, as we make a commitment to share your gospel to someone. Someone we know, someone we don't know, but someone in, that is in our heart. Lord, I pray that you will help us. You'll give us the words. You'll give us the, the courage. Empower us through the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we'll be able to share the good news to this person. And Lord, that, that you will speak to their hearts and convict them that they will Submit their lives to you, Lord. Help us to be disciple makers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the message and for Antitala. I pray that you continue to um, expand the territory, Lord, and that you continue to anoint and bless as you ministers um, in this assembly and through in and through this assembly. So thank you, Lord. Uh, we commit each of our lives into your hands, giving you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. It's always good to, to uh, respond to a message that you uh, hear. And, um, and it is our church. 
a vision if you do not know you, you can see in the bulletin it it has always been a, a vision of this assembly and a mission to reach the unsaved in kinoya in asinu in fiji and beyond to be an evangel an agency for evangelizing that is our vision of this assembly and it has in church the command is there to go and into all the world and we want to keep doing that so on, on uh, okay i'll tell you a bit later uh, welcome you all in the name of jesus and if you're watching online or here in person god bless you and i'll just quickly go through the announcements A- anyone here for the first time no <laughs> praise the lord it's good to see you, you all here and oh yeah um, my uh, my wife uh, mousi we can aunt uh, my mother in law's elder sister uh, we welcome her. i'll just give a hand and she's sitting right there so god bless you thank you for being here all right uh 3 pm we have a uh, itoki service language service antitala and uh, so invite your friends especially those who are not in part of any church and invite them for this 3 pm service this afternoon so we have it every fortnight right all right and this uh, fellowship is growing and antitala is excited but she runs away overseas now and then but she's back i don't know for how long then she'll run away again uh, auntie is, is a double agent she she uh, ministers here then uh, she gets a call from australia somewhere and she runs off her home uh, home missions overseas <laughs> all right so uh, 3 pm this afternoon and then a uh, weekday uh, program tuesday is our, our prayer session from 7 pm and we encourage you to come and be part of this prayer uh, it's it's a good time it's a wonderful time we spend time in prayer with each other and uh, and uh, we encourage you to be part of this session 7 pm tuesdays and then thursday our life group meetings and uh, slowly it's winding down for the year uh, but uh, triple n nandera nepani nandawa will be at um, brother sangeet kumar's home it's not written in the bulletin but uh, they will be having it at their home and you can talk to your area minister what's happening this week on thursday um, <clears throat> and then on friday uh, our regular program men's ministries women's ministries uh, youth kids club all take place uh, and men's men's group will be meeting at uncle bob's home um, in the dombati this this friday so we'll come here and then uh, and go to his home and um um so yes friday come and join us for the family event and then on sunday coming sunday we'll have our regular services 8:30 is our hindi service and 11 o'clock is our english service as you know uh just a few other things that i want to point out uh 16th which is a saturday 2 pm uh women's ministries we are having a, a little fellowship here with Uh, nasinu churches women from nasinu churches um and so t- uh, from uh, 2 pm this saturday 16th you are ladies you are invited to be part of this uh, fellowship so take note of that you can talk to sister edith or other auntie tala someone if you need more information but it's happening this saturday here from 2 pm 16th also the women's ministry is usually every year and they have a project uh, christmas they prepare christmas gift for poor families in our church also for full time workers and uh, so uh, they're calling out if you're willing to contribute towards this uh, you're most welcome you can um, you see the tide tide envelope you can just note an amount you're willing to give If you don't know we have a compassion uh, program that we uh, run in our assembly and uh, through this compassion fund we um, we help uh, poor families in our church sometimes we get uh, uh, requests from uh, those outside our church and uh, and uh, we not many people give to this fund but uh, 
maybe not many of you know, but we have this fund and you are most welcome to contribute whatever you can. And, and that fund is used to help uh, uh, poor families. Actually, every month um, we, we provide groceries and things like that. Mainly it's groceries for poor families. So every month uh, we help maybe in, on average four, four families uh, with the grocery packs. Sometimes some urgent, uh, some urgent uh, need comes, uh, some families face, uh, face problems, and so we use that fund to help them out. So, uh, so for Christmas, we'd like to give them something nice um, for Christmas for poor families, and uh, you're most welcome to help towards this. So just whenever, or you can come and give it direct, or just fill it in that uh, tight envelope, and don't forget to put the money in. <laughs> All right. Um, on, on the 30th of this month, we'll be we're organizing a church picnic. Uh, we'll be uh, hiring a bus, and uh, you don't have to pay for the bus fare, but uh, uh, first come, first serve, there'll be, you can, there's a chart at the back, and uh, the ashes, you can, it's on the 30th, so we'll leave 8.30 in the morning to Pacific Harbor, um, and uh, you'll, uh, the property there requires $5 per head, uh, and uh, so we'll go there in the morning and then return maybe 3.30. So it'll be a church family picnic, and uh, there'll be activities and fun stuff, and uh, you can bring food and uh, like um, organize within your area or personal. It depends, uh, however you like, and it'll be a great time of fellowship and fun. So on the thirtieth. But for the bus, you just need to um, write your name down. First come, first serve. As you know, sixty people roughly can sit in the bus. So just put your name in and uh, how many people will be going. Uh, that way, we'll be able to um, coordinate the bus uh, properly. So that's on the 30th. We'll be giving more announcements as, as we go. Cleaning flower arrangements by Kinoa Lodala Beach Live Group uh, this coming weekend. And um, I think, ladies, uh, if you can please, uh, after the service, just stay back for maybe five minutes or so. Uh, the women's ministries leaders would like to talk to you. Uh, so just, just stay back for a bit. I think I have something else to tell you, right, Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school uh, kids program, Sunday school program will be on the, f is scheduled, there's a change in date, and so it'll be on the first, and as they're preparing for that, the kids are very excited, preparing for the, the, this event. Um, we're requesting for your help. There'll be a lot of work in preparation for the Sunday school program, like uh, decoration and things like that. Uh, props and uh, costumes and things like that. So uh, your help would be very much appreciated. Uh, talk to Auntie Tala or Jivniel or Edith or any of the Sunday school teachers. Uh, even if your children are in Sunday school, you can uh, help the teachers out. So please uh, just take note of that and your help uh, and your support will be very much appreciated. We'll give, continue to give more announcements as we go. I think that's all I have for you in terms of announcements, sorry. And, uh, oh, uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, on, on uh, Friday, the men's group, we, we sat down and we sort of challenged ourselves and saying uh, we need to do more than just come and meet on Fridays. And uh, one thing we, d we decided was to, uh, Sunday afternoon, 12.30, um, where it's 12.30 already, we were supposed to meet here at 12.30, and maybe for an hour, or just half an hour to one hour, just target a street somewhere close by, uh, maybe start from Dombati, and we'll just go house to house, uh, we'll share the gospel, we have some tracks at the back. So men, if you, uh, or anyone, if you want to join us, we'll straight after the service, we'll just go um, f to a few homes, just half an hour to one hour, and if, you, if you're interested in joining us, you're most welcome. And from there, we'll just disperse home. So this is straight after the service we'll be going. And uh, I think, Auntie, your message is, uh, is what, we, uh, what we're going to um, practice now, homework. <laughs>
All right, so thank you. Uh, let's all stand and uh, as we um, take our tithes and offerings in our hands. We want to thank God for all his blessings in our lives. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. All your blessings, all that we have, all that we Ah, Lord, we know it has come from you, and we want to use it for your glory. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for um, people as, they've give, as they'll give. I pray that your hand will be on their lives, on their income, in all areas of their life, Lord. That they'll continue to uh, worship and honor you through their lives and through their income and through their heart with all their strength. So thank you, Lord. We give you all praise. Pray that your, uh, this offering, this collection will be blessed and be used for the glory, for the extension of your kingdom. We also remember those who are sick, they've given their names. You know each person. No? We, we intercede for them right now. You know their situation. You know the, who they are, where they are. In whatever situation they are, Lord, we pray that your healing hand will touch them right now. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You, uh, you may be seated. And... Uh, as the offering has been collected, anyone wants to share a testimony? Someone you want to share a testimony? Something you want to share? Welcome brother Ezekiel, he's back with us after a while. Let's give him a hand. Praise God, good to see you brother. Anyone has a testimony? Come on, while the offering is being collected. No, oh, you guys are very quiet, very shy. I know God is doing a lot of things in your lives. No? <laughs> Brother Sahai, I think, uh, I'll just ask you, you've been uh, visiting us, uh, coming here. Let's ask you to uh, conclude with the word of prayer. God bless you. Uh, I'll do you one better, I'll testify too. Oh, so, yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, it's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, my name is Sen Sahai. That's my wife, Victoria. Um, so for me, I'm, a, I'm from Fiji. I'm from Navua originally. Um, first generation Christian from our family, like most of us. And um, so the last three years, uh, we got married and we were in Samoa. So for us, uh, for the work of the Lord, we're in Samoa. We're involved in Bible school. So we are running a Bible school with the church in Samoa. And of course, there is a multicultural church and a Samoan church. My wife is a teacher by profession, so she's here doing her doctorate at USP, so that's what brings us here for this season of our life. And we've seen God's uh, goodness in this season also. You know, God is also faithful. Huh? So praise God for this season, and it's wonderful to come and fellowship and see what the Lord has in store. Uh, you know, we all are branches, and Jesus is the vine, so... I pray that we're so exciting to be here and see what the Lord has in store. So let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you once again. Father, we, begin, we began with you and we finish with you, Lord. We know you are the Alpha and Omega. Father, we thank you even as we come together in your presence, in your fellowship. Uh, we acknowledge that you are Lord of, our, Lord of our lives. We thank you that you are the Lord of the harvest. I thank you for the word that was uh, preached today by our sister, Lord. I pray every heart that will receive it. I thank you, Lord, for the 40, 60, and 100 full return in our lives. I also pray for the, for the seed that has been sowed in the tithes and offering, Lord. You said you give seed to the sower. Every seed that is sown, Lord, I pray that it's going into a good ground for the work of your for the kingdom, Lord, I thank you for the sowers that have given, that you bless them financially, you bless them in their, in their homes, in their soul, in the families, Lord, in every area of their lives, Lord. I thank you for that blessing. Father, I pray even uh, for the rest of the week ahead, everything that we do in our business, our family, Lord, even whatever is done in this ministry, Lord, I thank you that your hand will be on it. Even I pray, Lord, for the traveling mercy and grace, even as we make our way back home, that you will be with us. I also pray for the brothers that are going out to share your word in this community, Lord. I thank you for your anointing, your grace upon them. We also remember the senior pastor, 
Uh, I don't see him this morning, but God bless him. And uh, the first lady, Lord, we pray for his life, his uh, health, and uh, his family, Lord. I pray that you continue to bless him, even as he carries on the vision that you have put for this uh, house of faith. And I thank you, Lord, for every staff in this ministry, every church worker, Lord, every pastor, every leader in every ministry, Lord, you are pray that you continue to impart your grace and you lead them from glory to glory, Lord. Even all the sister churches uh, around this area in Nasinu, I also pray that you extend their borders even all over Fiji, Lord. You are opening doors, uh, doors of utterance, Lord, doors of finance, Lord, that people are coming, Lord, from the east, from the west, from the south, that you are drawing in more people, Lord. You said, ask and you will give the nations for our inheritance, even the heathens, Lord. I thank you that you are using this church, Lord, to be the light, the salt in our nation, especially in the Indian community, in the, even into our the Hindus in this community. I pray, Lord, that the light of the gospel, Lord, will open their eyes and the God of this world will rebuke you. Get your hands of our people. I pray, Lord, in the next year, Lord, that souls will be added into this kingdom, that you are lighting up a new fire in our hearts, Lord, that you are fanning the fire, Lord, even as you told Timothy to stir up that gift. Father, I thank you for the preachers here, that they are stirring up. You are using them to stir up that gift. You are fanning to flame that fire, Lord. I thank you that souls are coming. Souls are coming into this house, Lord, that they will be saved, they will be discipled, Lord, and they will be sent even to the rest of this nation and, and beyond, Lord. Even as we are in the last days, Lord, we do not take this time for granted, Lord. We lift up our eyes and we know that Fiji is ripe. Fiji is ripe for the harvest, Lord, we, and we declare your lordship. We declare your kingship over this nation, Lord, that everything that will come against this nation, Lord, that you will be... You will stand against it, Father. I thank you for this church once again. And we give everything back unto you, Lord. All the praises and all the glory and all the honor. In the mighty name we pray. Amen. Mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I just remembered something. Senior pastor is uh, um, he's, uh, preaching right now at Bethany Assemblies of God in Grantham Road. And so that's why he's not here. And also one, one thing, eh? one last thing before you go. You should know this. We are saving souls. We are making disciples. We are reaching uh, to those who do not know Christ so that they'll be saved from destruction, okay? So we, our, our job, our duty, our responsibility is to save them from destruction. And when we have that in mind, because when we don't know Jesus, we are going to hell. And so in hell, it's eternal death and so much pain and suffering. And we want to save our family, our friends from going to that hell. We want to take them to heaven. So if we have that in mind, I think it makes it much easier when we go and share the gospel to them. God bless you. Thank you for being part of the service. Meet with each other.